Okay, here's the coupled and decoupled carbon-13 NMR of dimethyl methyl phosphonate, uh, the fire retardant. Here's the structure of it. It's got a methyl here that's uh, got three equivalent hydrogens, and it's got two methyls on the oxygens that are equivalent, and they have three hydrogens each as well. So first, let's look at the uh, proton and p32 decoupled spectrum. So the carbons cannot be coupled by the hydrogen H1 isotope or the phosphorus P31 isotope. And we get one signal here down at about 56 parts per million. And another one over here about 10 parts per million. And we're going to label that one to the left. One, not, not ABC like uh, proton NMR. This is carbon NMR, so he's in numbers. That's one and that's two. And I already color coded it. You can see the two uh, methyls on the oxygens there, the carbons that are shown on more downfield. And then the purple one I labeled is uh, the methyl that's more upfield at about 10 parts per million. All right, now let's look at uh, the spectrum if we only uh, do proton decoupling. We allow the phosphorus, this phosphorus right here, 31, we allow it to couple. Let's see what it looks like. Boom, look at that. We no longer have a singlet. We have a doublet. It's a real tight doublet. It's got very small coupling constant. And that means that uh, this, these two carbons right here, they can couple through the oxygen, it looks like, to the phosphorus, but it's weak. And the phosphorus has two spin states. And so it's got an alpha and beta spin state. And it's one neighbor for these carbons so that it splits it twice, n plus one. Because the phosphorus, if it's in its alpha spin state, the uh, carbon shows up a little more downfield. If, it's, if the phosphorus is in the beta spin state, it shows up up here there there we go and then over on this end we got larger coupling a doublet again for this guy the reason why is this carbon is directly attached to the phosphorus it's really close where these ones are you know they're like one two bonds away this carbon's just one bond away from the phosphorus so we got a larger coupling constant it's split more there when the when the phosphorus is in its alpha spin state it shows up here when the phosphorus is a beta spin state it shows up there and uh so now i'm gonna show you the coupling constants so the little guys Coming in hot, can you see it? It's really small, see him right there? Oop, here, I'll do him again, I like him. Here he comes, here he comes, Oop. So there he is, so he's showing you that the coupling constant for that, the, for the, the coupling between the carbon 13 and the phosphorus 31 is six hertz, small coupling constant. And then this one over here, it's larger coupling constant. It's a carbon to phosphorus coupling for that one is 142 hertz because this carbon is directly attached. So in carbon NMR, you can get large coupling constants like that. All right, now let's look at the, uh, only the phosphorus is decoupled, the uh, P31. The hydrogen is still allowed to couple the carbons. So let's see what that looks like. Boom, look at that. Oh, instead of both decoupled, you get a singlet. Only the uh, hydrogen decoupled, you get a doublet. Now if you just decouple the phosphorus, you get a quartet. Now does that quartet make sense? So let's see. This carbon right here has three hydrogens on it. So that's like three neighbors, N plus one, four. There it is, quartet, it makes sense. Uh, so let's see what happens with this one. Same thing. The uh, methyl here has three hydrogens, three neighbors, N plus one, got split into a quartet. Their coupling constants are pretty close, but they're a little different. So this particular one is 148 hertz. So it's 148 hertz different distance there. This is 148 as well. And that's 148 as well. And then on this end, we have 128 hertz, a little smaller, but similar. They're both carbon to hydrogen coupling when the hydrogen is attached to the carbon. So you got 128 hertz across there, 128 hertz across here, 128 hertz across there. All right. Now, finally, the complicated one, we're going to not decouple anything. So the protons, the H1s and the phosphorus, the P31, they're both going to be able to couple. So here we go. Whoa, look at that one. That, this one came out cool. So you can see this carbon here has hydrogens directly attached to it, three of them. It gets split into a quartet. And then it gets long range coupling from the phosphorus, which just splits each of those into little doublets. So it's like it's been, the quartet here has been doublified. It, or, and you can also call this a quartet of doublets. And then over here, this one got pretty complicated because um, the coupling constants between like 142 and 128 are pretty close. Here, there's a big difference, 148, 6, it's easy to see. But here, let's explain this one. 
Let's break it down. So, oh, I'll explain this one first. So like this particular one here got doublified. So it got split into a doublet like that, right? Easy. Over here, <clears throat> this particular one, you can think of it, it was split 128, but now it's gonna be split 128 by the hydrogens. Now it's gonna be split again, but this time it's gonna be split 142 by the phosphorus. So it's gonna be split like that far apart, this one little guy. So it's across here, it's 148. Now this one, it's split, it was already split 128, it's gonna do 142 again, so it's gonna go here and then over to the right one. I know that's complicated. If you didn't predict that one over that one, it's okay. We're gonna learn how to do things, things called coupling trees. Some of you have seen it in office hours, but I'll show everybody later and you'll get a better feel for this, but crazy, huh? And then uh, now uh, let's look at the uh, coupling constants. So uh, if you notice carefully, I picked this to start on the right side of this doublet and the right side of that doublet, because that will be the correct values for this. It'd be 148 like that. And then I, if you're not 100% on that, it's okay. We're going to go over that later. Okay, so here comes the little guy. He's coming in hot. Where'd he go? Oh, there he is. Oh, I missed him. He's right there. <laughs> Let's watch him again. Okay, here. I'll do it again. Here comes the little guy. Whoa, whoa, there he is. Okay, so that little one. Uh, his coupling constant is six again. Easy, easy. Now, this one's a little more complicated on the right, like before. Uh, I'm going to measure this was split. Should have been split 142. Yep carbon phosphorus and then the next one is from this tall one on the left to the tall one on the right that's the uh, 128 that's a little complicated if you're not getting exactly where that is it's fine all right so good job we, we, we could stop with this uh, whole decoupled coupled I'm sorry we can stop talking about this coupled carbon and MR stuff we'll go back to the easy decoupled ones here where you have like oh I have one type of carbon one signal another type of carbon one signal easy